Welcome again to our home. I've been thinking about the story of the resurrection day in Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8, and I'd like to start by reading it to you. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. That's a very abrupt ending, isn't it? It sounds as though Mark stopped in the middle of the story. And that's what some people thought. So they wrote what they thought was a better ending for it. In fact, in some Bibles, there are one or even two endings after these verses in the Gospel, usually with a note to say they were not in the earliest manuscripts. But if you read them, you see that the style is quite different. They're definitely not written by Mark. And that's something that all scholars agree on. But let's look at what is actually here in the Gospel. It starts off with these women going to the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. They were in a very fragile emotional state. Their world had been turned upside down. Jesus had died. He was not only the Messiah for who they trusted in, but he was also their dear friend. They were grief-stricken, but they were coming to anoint his body so that everything could be done properly for him. And that's what we always want to do for people we love when they die, isn't it? But when they got there, the stone had already been rolled away from the entrance, which was very puzzling and actually quite disturbing. Who had done this and why had they done it? They went into the tomb, expecting to see Jesus' body laid out there on the slab. Instead, Jesus' body was not there. But there was a young man sitting at the side, dressed in a white robe. They were alarmed when they saw him. Who was he? Why was he there? And what had he done with Jesus' body? When the young man spoke to them, I don't think they really took it in at that point. They were so frightened and confused that they fled from the tomb, and they were too scared to speak to anyone about what had happened. And that is where the Gospel ends. But I've been thinking about what might have happened next, and this is what I imagine. I think they would have kept running until they were out of breath or found somewhere where they felt safe. Then they would have stopped, sat down, gradually calmed down. And when they were calm, they would have begun to think and talk about what the young man had said to them. And they would have realized that what he said to was what Jesus had said to them before, that he would rise again and go ahead of them to Galilee. As they talked about it, it would have gradually sunk in that Jesus really had risen again. He was alive. And when they realised this, they would probably have begun to think that they must tell the disciples, as the young man had told them to. So they would have gone and told the other disciples, including Peter. And so we have the story here in Mark's Gospel. Well, now that last bit is my imagining about what may have happened. But let's go back to the Gospel itself and look again at the message that that young man gave to them. It's agreed that this young man dressed in white probably was an angel. And in this message here, two things stand out. First of all, 
Jesus was no longer in the tomb. He had risen from the dead. He is alive. Then the other thing that stands out is what he said about the disciples. Jesus, through this young man, told the disciples, including Peter, to go and join him in Galilee. Did you notice they were called Jesus' disciples? Even though they had abandoned him and denied him, he did not disown them. He forgave them, despite their abysmal failures. Now, even though the end of Mark's Gospel is unexpected and very different to the other Gospels, I think we can gain a lot from it. It's really encouraging to see that Jesus didn't give up on his disciples, even when they got everything wrong. So we today can trust in his forgiveness when we get things wrong. We know that he will still love us, still acknowledge us as his disciples. And we have the assurance that he is no longer lying in a tomb. He is alive. And so in the Easter season, we declare, Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.